take a look at this parallelogram. I've given the lengths of two of the edges and the length of one of the internal lines, which are otherwise known as diagonals. Do you think you could calculate the area of this parallelogram with only these three details? This is a little bit of a tricky problem because generally you have three options for finding the area. But for each of the three options, there's an obstacle to using them. We'll talk about these obstacles, then show how we can find a workaround so that we can find the area. Now, if we want to find the area of this parallelogram, one way is to multiply the base of the parallelogram by its height. Another way is to use the formula a times b times sine of c, where a and b are two adjacent sides of the parallelogram, and c is the angle between them. And another way is to use the formula x times y over 2, where x and y are the intersecting diagonals or internal lines of the parallelogram. Now, each of these approaches have a problem. When we try to use base times height, we only have the base. Since opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal, the base length must be 2, but we don't have a height, so we can't use the base times height formula. If we try to use AB sine of C, because we're given the length of two adjacent edges, those edges could be A and B, but we need the angle between them in order to use sine of C, and we have no angle in the parallelogram, so we wouldn't be able to use the formula directly. And if we try to use X times Y divided by 2, well, we only have one of the diagonals, so that would prevent us from using this formula directly. So because we can't use any of these three formulas directly, we're going to have to find a workaround first. So let's see how we can do that. I propose that we find the other diagonal, and so then we'd have the value of both diagonals. We can then let one diagonal be x and the other diagonal be y, and then we can use x times y over 2 to find the area. Now you're probably wondering how on earth we're going to figure out the value of the second diagonal. Some of you might be thinking that we could draw in the second diagonal and then maybe try to use trigonometry or Pythagoras, but we might not have all the information we need to be sure that that would work. But there actually is a way of doing this by exploiting properties of parallelograms, and some of these properties you're probably already aware of. Let's remove the second diagonal for the moment, and I'm going to give the first diagonal the label of x and the length of x must be 3. Now let's add in and label the second diagonal. We'll call that diagonal y. We don't know the length of y yet. Now if you think of each diagonal as being split by the other diagonal, that is, the x diagonal has been divided into two separate lengths by the y diagonal, and the y diagonal has been divided into two separate lengths by the x diagonal, we can use one parallelogram property to figure out what those lengths are. Here's the first property, parallelogram diagonals bisect each other. And that means they cut each other exactly in half. So now the x diagonal, which originally had the length of 3, is divided into two halves. So each section of the diagonal has a value of 3 over 2, and I'll leave them as fractions. Now even though we don't have a value for y, we know that y must be split into 2 because the diagonals bisect each other. So we can still rewrite that as two lengths of y over 2. Now it actually looks like we might be able to use Pythagoras to figure out the length of y over 2. If this is a right angled triangle then Pythagoras will work, but we have to be absolutely certain that it is, otherwise our values will be inaccurate. And here is where two other parallelogram properties will be useful. The second property is that opposite edges are equal. So because the length of the top edge is 2, the length of the bottom edge must be 2, and because the length of the right edge is 2, the length of the left edge must be 2. Now since all four edges of this parallelogram are of equal length, this must be a rhombus. And because it's a rhombus, the bisecting diagonals have a unique property, and that is rhombus diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. So the angles at these intersects must be 90 degrees. And because this is a right angle, this has to be a right angle triangle, and since we have two of the edge values of the triangle, we can use Pythagoras to figure out the third edge, which is y over 2, and then we can just double that, which will give us the length of y, and then we can use the equation x times y over 2 to give the area of the parallelogram. Now let's just focus on the top right hand triangle. In a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest edge, which is also the edge that's opposite to the right angle. In Pythagoras, the sum of the squares of the other two edges is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And so that means that y over 2 squared plus 3 over 2 squared must be equal to 2 squared. 
Now, if we multiply everything out, we get y squared over 4 plus 9 over 4 is equal to 4. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So on the right hand side, we're going to get 16 and the 4s cancel on the left hand side. So that's y squared plus 9 equals 16. And then if we subtract 9 from both sides, we'll just have y squared on the left hand side and 16 minus 9, well, that equals 7. And to get the value of y, we simply need to square root. And so y is equal to the square root of 7. So we know that x equals 3 and y equals root 7. We now have the values for x and y, so we can use the formula x times y over 2 to find the area. So the area is equal to x times y over 2, which is equal to, well, x is 3 and y is root 7 over 2. So that's the area of the parallelogram. And so despite the obstacles of not having enough information initially, we were able to use the properties of parallelograms to get extra values, in this case, the length of the diagonal y, which enabled us to use one of the formulas to find the area of the parallelogram. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.